Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Stormkeep. My name is Paul. Hey, guys, this is Mergonk. Uh, Mergonk and I are going to do a quick War Scroll review for the Domitan Storm Coven, a new War Scroll released in Underworlds and uh, usable in Age of Sigmar. So I don't know what these guys do in Underworlds. I have no idea. I don't follow that game anymore. Uh, but we are going to take a look at what they can do in Age of Sigmar. Uh, this video is brought to you by Kaiju Gaming Lounge, the official sponsor of the Stormkeep podcast. They offer custom gaming tools. They ship out of Florida. They ha also stock our merch. So if you're looking for 7-inch, 9-inch sticks, which are great for Beasts of Chaos, Seraphon, and Stormcast, uh, or if you're just looking for some fancy dice, give them a shout. Uh, visit kaijugaminglounge.com to get everything you need. Let's start off the video by taking a look at the War Scroll. Uh, this will be linked in the video description below. You can go download it for yourself. Uh, this is a free War Scroll available on the Games Workshop website. Uh, so there's a lot of things that that stick out right away. Um, the fact that it's three models that are four wounds apiece, that's 12 wounds total for a three up save. That's good, right? Uh, mm -hmm. They are a two spell wizard, kind of like Evocators, but instead of just being able to cast Empower, this unit can cast, you know, Mystic Shield, Arcane Bolt, and their signature spell, Aethershock, which is pretty good, well, which we'll talk about in a second. They have... Uh, missile weapon attack, which um, is better than it looks because it'll have plus one hit pretty much all the time. So that's going to be effectively uh, six shots each on on twos and fours, rend one, d3 damage each. That's It's not a good shooting attack, but it adds up, right? It's, it's better than not having one. Their melee weapons are pretty much pathetic. Like, you're not bringing these guys for their melee weapons. You're bringing them because they are a two-spell wizard and they have a shooting attack. They have this cool mechanic, Gather the Aether, where they pick one battlefield quarter each turn, at the start of each round, I should say, and that becomes Aether Charged. And while you're Aether Charged, if this unit's in that quarter, they get plus one hit for, for shooting and for uh, for melee attacks, which is neat. Don't have to use all that attack, they're always hitting on twos, pretty cool. The main thing about this unit, though, is the Aether Shock spell. You can only attempt to cast a spell if you are within the Aether Charged Quarter. Uh, that's not that hard to do, frankly. It's really easy to predict where you're going to be at the start of the turn when you pick this. Um, the spell is hard to cast. There's a cast value of 8, but it has infinite range, and it has a very, very powerful effect. What it does is you can pick any unit that's in an Aether Charged Quarter, if, and that, as long as it's visible. If it's a friendly unit, it gains Strike first until your next hero phase, and if it's an enemy unit, it gains Strike last until your next hero phase. And that is a very, very powerful effect. Um... Just crazy strong. Uh, Stormcast with Strike first defensively. So if an enemy charges you, you get to hit them first. Is incredibly powerful. Like picture charging into something like ten Retributors or ten Evocators or a block of even four Concussors, right? Like something that just hits really hard and usually just can't take hits at all. Um, if you get to Strike first, that's a huge deal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I, I I really like Strike first with Stormcast. Um... We've mentioned in our previous streams and videos before how mechanically we're sort of very plain, and this is now the season of lots of debuffs in terms of minus one to hit, minus one to wound, and lots of um, attack uh, sequence, uh, phase, you know, phase activation mess arounds, like strike first, strike last, uh, double strike sometimes. Um, so having this tool opened up for us feels really cool. Um, the Aether Charge quarter, quarter thing is weird, but I guess they wanted to stop translocating with it um so they want this this thing to be close by whatever uh it wants to um be fighting first with so like it's it's like a defensive thing it's like a storm keep thing or like a like a very anvil piece thing yeah i um, think i think you can just kind of ignore the plus one hit like if you really need to cast the spell on a specific target uh that's mm -hmm. definitely worth giving up the plus one hit strike first strike last is so much better than plus one hit on this unit so mm -hmm. I, that's a small price to pay ideally you would Aether charge the quarter that they're fighting and shooting in and cast a spell on that quarter as well. Uh, sure, yeah. Um, but it, it's really hard when you think about it because there's if it, it pretty much means that this unit has to be up there ready to cast a spell in that Aether charge quarter because you can't move in the hero phase, which means you probably need to translocate there. Um well, not necessarily. Like off deployment, you just pick the quarter that these guys are deployed in, and the unit mm -hmm. that you want to pick is deployed in, right? Like that's a huge a quarter is a huge amount of space. Um, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, and, I, I, yeah. I guess you could translocate the hammer unit up then. Yeah. Yeah, if you really need to, like if if you're slightly yeah. out of position, you can always translocate back into range. Yeah. 
Um, yeah, no, the the effect is cool. Um, I like the plus one to hit too, but unfortunately, uh, I don't know why this unit doesn't have the sacrosanct keyword because then you could empower it at least, you know. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of uh, there's a lot of things missing here. Um, so let's go through the pros and cons. So first off, like I said, twelve wounds on a three up save. That's pretty good for a two spell two unbind wizard to have that kind of defensive profile. Is cool. It's not a hero, so it won't get you know find a tower. It won't get heroic recovery. It doesn't get access to um, lookout sir or things like that. Um, but it is still a lot is of wounds. The first there. time we've seen something like that. I I think it might be the first time we've seen a two spell wizard unit that's not a hero. Like it's super weird. This is a very different yeah. war scroll. Or, or like, have you ever seen a a, a warband that's not a hero? Yeah, like Steelheart's champions aren't heroes. Far striders. Oh aren't yeah, heroes. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, sorry. I'm so used to seeing like these weird things on hero abilities. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it feels like a hero, right? It, it's got yeah. so much stuff going on. But um, if this is the direction they're going with Stormcast, I'm I'm down for it. These are like super elite units that have a very powerful effect. Like I, I like this design. Um, so, like I said, the shooting is okay. The melee is okay. Like there's nothing. There's nothing right home about. Um, they have the knight keyword, which is weird. I think this might be the only non-hero knight unit ever. Uh, they can issue holy commands, and I think that's the only use for knight. Uh, if you're not a hero, you can't learn spells from the lore. You, you know, they're not a priest, so they can't learn prayers. So these are the only things that matter. But they can issue holy commands, so that's kind of cool. Well, they're wizard keyword, so they could learn. Actually, no, if they're unique, they can't. Never mind. No, uh, so so they can't learn universal spells because they're unique, and they're not a hero. And the stormcast lore requires being a stormcast wizard hero. So oh yikes! Yep. So, so they can't There's, learn any yeah. spells from there. So you can't do like celestial blades with them on top of the strike first. Uh, so all they're going to cast pretty much is is aether shock and mystic shield. And uh, in season two, in particular, they are an infantry unit. There's no restriction on being a unique unit, so they can be put into sharpshooters or even Galatian command if you want to strike in the hero phase with them. Uh, but as an as a sharpshooter, they're pretty interesting. You know, six shots on twos and three twos and fours uh, with rend one d three. It's not very good shooting damage, but when you're shooting at, like, a five-wound hero with a four-up save, okay, mm. that could swing and actually just take him out. Yeah, I like it. I just don't like the wounding on fours part. I wish, you know, you could empower it, or, like, I don't know why this unit wounds on fours. That's my... Yeah, the, that... The, yeah, the shooting attack is nice to have. The wound on four is, is like, that's a whole po bullet point here. It's like, why? <laughs> why is why is a Stormcast yeah. unit wounding on fours? It doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you, why, like, and we'll talk about this when we get to the points. But honestly, what it's really interesting to see, though, and I wonder what this design design decision if it's an overall design decision. This is the first time I've seen a unit that is a magic unit that also shoots with magic. Does that make sense? Like, yeah, there's a couple. Does each bird shoots, but the, but it uses like I don't know what the hell it, it's called. It uses its staff or something. Yeah. Um, but this is the first time, like instead of just having a psychic sorry a magic ability that's like 18 inch range or something and then doing magic a magic damage this is just straight up does a shooting attack which is interesting to see it it certainly feels like a bit of that 40k design starting to creep in here mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. but i i think it's cool um uh, i like the idea of stormcast getting more generalist units like this isn't just a wizard that casts a spell it's a wizard it's a body it's you know they fight poorly they shoot poorly but they're trying to do something here um, I think the execution is just a little bit lacking. Did they just take the knight in Arcanum points and multiply that by three? Is that what? Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. It is that. Yeah. So okay. let's go through the cons. Uh, it is slow. It's only a five inch move. If you want, you know, thankfully, because they have an unlimited range on their spell, effectively, as long as they can see the target that's in the Aether Charge quarter, that's it. That's enough. Which means you can cast out of unbinding range, which is amazing. That's, a, you know, one of the problems with consistency in spell casting is enemy unbinds can randomly just take it out. Like, even if you're tech list casting on tens, sometimes people still unbind your spells and it's like, it just feels awful. Um, being able to do it out of unbinding range is awesome. Really love that. Uh, but they are slow, so if you want to, you know, reposition them into sight, you'll, you will have to use translocate on them, which, which feels pretty bad. Uh, they're not a hero, like we mentioned, so you can't use heroic actions, you can't learn spells from the Lord of the Storm, which really sucks. They're unique, so they can't learn spells from the universal spell lore, so no flaming weapon, unfortunately. So you're basically getting a two-spell wizard with plus zero to cast that needs to roll an eight to cast a spell, which is about a 42%. And you're paying 275 points for that. 
Uh, that is a lot of points in any list. Like that's like more than a unit of fulminators. Um, mm-hmm. It's it's very very expensive. Um, and yeah, it's <laughs> it's like evocators. It's like what? Okay, like what? Yeah, for and, a utility and, unit, like it just feels weird. Mm-hmm. If if they could learn a spell from the lore, that would be great. That would, might justify their point cost. You know, like I might actually consider this as like celestial blades and mystic shield for two hundred seventy five points, twelve wound body. That's kind of cool. Um, the eight up cast is really for me the worst part of this. Like I could get past the points. It's the fact that it's an eight up cast because that's only a forty two percent success rate. Or if you have a reroll effect, for example, from Chronomantic Cogs, that's about a sixty six percent. Um, and Stormcast really don't do a good job boosting spellcasting. Like, all we have are, are random allies that can do it and the Star Drake, which is, you know, 400, 500 points. It's really expensive to get these guys to a plus one. Um, to get a plus one and a reroll, you have to pay at least 470 points in a Stormcast army. It, it's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot of points. And then, mm-hmm. and then you have to think, okay, well, what am I actually casting this on? I'm not going to cast it on an enemy unit because Stormcast hits so hard that they can wipe out whatever they hit. They don't really need to cast it on an enemy unit. Uh, what you want to be doing with Stormcast armies is casting it on a friendly unit. And then anytime an opponent tries to charge you, you get to hit first. So like a squad of 10 Evocators or 10 Retributors uh, with Galatian Veterans right now can just obliterate anything that comes within three inches of them. Um, so you bas- it, it makes that unit, unit immune to melee combat. Like, nobody will put anything into the combat with that, which means you don't have to bring something like a Lord Castellant or a Gardas to keep that unit alive, because why bother? Your opponent's not going to do any damage to it. Mm-hmm. Uh, they are... Unless they also have fight first. Uh, yes, that's, that can be a problem. <laughs> uh, they are Hammers of Sigmar. Which you can play this outside of Hammers of Sigmar, but you can't benefit from something like a Gardas Aura or Astral Templars or... Yeah, celestial Vindicators, let's say, if you wanted to get hit six exploding. Um, none of that works. You, you only get the Hammers of Sigmar bonuses and only if you're playing Hammers of Sigmar. And uh, yeah, like you said, wounding on a four up, like, why? <laughs> it's just thematically, it doesn't really make sense to me. I don't, I don't get it. Um, but all in all, the effect is really strong. They've got a lot of utility. They've got a lot of things that I really like about this War Scroll. I also just like the narrative idea of every like every round, a quarter of the battlefield is just bathed in lightning. That sounds awesome to play with. Like, uh, but 275 points, no bonuses to cast, eight up spell. Like, it's all really rough. Like, these guys are. I think you can find a list for them that'll make them work. It might not be in Stormcast. Uh, might be as an ally in another army or as a coalition unit in another army. So overall, I'm I'm sticking them in the C tier. I think they are competitively viable in some super niche build. I think, I think people can find it. Yeah, um, I, I think they are from just the abilities alone and the war scroll. I think it's a playable war scroll. I just think the points are wacky, like really, really stupidly wacky. Like, yeah, if this was like, 210, 200 points, it would be a like slam into so many lists. I would love to use these. Yeah, guys. like two hundred points would make this actually pl- very playable. But push it up to perhaps low eight here. Like, and I just don't know because the last book I've seen that had a uh, playable Underworld's Warband was Corn, because it has access to like a very similar like Magor's Fiends that just like summons a unit, makes them two blood tie, then that unit costs one twenty. Why does this cost two seventy five? I have no idea. It's crazy, um, man. Uh, we pay so much to get a two spell wizard. 275 is the same cost as a Slan Star Master. <laughs> yeah, like, what is happening? Like, it's, is it the three up save? Because the Zinch one is also two up and it's like 190 points. And it comes with like five free models or something and a teleport spell. Oh, like, a teleport <laughs> spell in Zinch is so useful too. Like, both yeah, of these like, warbands have given these armies exactly what they needed. Yeah. And it's like, what, like, you know, what, what's that? Where's the parody here? Like, what is, what is going on? Not sure. But uh, let's try to break this unit. <laughs> so I've written some lists here. Let me know if, what you think about them. Uh, first yeah. one here is a Knight's Excelsior list. I'm using a Lord Relictor General with High Priest Translocation and Tunnel Master, along with a Battle Mage of Gur to get plus two run and charge, uh, and then a big old squad of 10 Retributors. Uh, the idea here is you do the typical thing where you, you wild form your Retributors to give them plus two charge, you translocate them nine inches from an enemy, and then with a plus two charge, you have a very high chance to make that charge, especially with a reroll using a command point. Uh, and then the secret spice here is that you have the Domitan Storm Coven um, casting their Aether Shock ability on the Retributors. So those Retributors are going to charge in, obliterate whatever they hit, 
and then nothing can fight them back because they will do it again before they have a chance to to fight them. Um, the Drake yeah, Storm, it's sort of like our Quicksilver Drought combo, but like having it permanently on something. And and, I like the addition of the uh, yeah. Star Drake for the plus one. The plus one, it's got a good shooting attack. It's got scintillating trail to make things a little more reliable because he's going to be casting the cogs um, without any bonuses. You know, it, it, he might be in range for unbinds because he's such such a big base, so the minus one really helps. Um, Yep, and those cogs are definitely going to boost the consistency of the Aether Shock. If you have plus one and cogs, it's like having a like a two up basically, uh, and you will be doing this out of unbinding range. So there's there's a lot of dice rolls involved here. Um, the high priest translocation has to go off, the wild form has to go off, the cogs have to go off and not get unbound. Um, but if this combo goes off, like those retributors are untouchable. They just control whatever space they land in. It's really really strong. Rounding yeah. it out, it's got, you know, two by five sequiturs. They're a nice little utility piece with call for aid to revive them once per game. And a unit of three Vanguard Raptors because the Storm Coven are sharpshooters. I figure you combo that with some long strike crossbows and you can just be sniping heroes all day long. Yeah, I can see it. I can see it working. Yeah, maybe not the most optimal version of the list. It was just, I tried to more or less keep it with Stormcast units. I know the Battle Mage is an ally, but he's he's basically a Stormcast unit at this point. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> we'll say he is. <laughs> yeah. The second list I prepared was really leaning into the power of the of the Storm Coven. Uh, this is a Cities of Sigmar list with Hello Heart, and I will caution people, um, if you like this list, do not buy any of these models. We have no idea what's going to happen with anything in Cities of Sigmar. Uh, all the models in this army could just be squatted and never replaced. So if you happen to have the stuff needed to play, this list go wild, but otherwise just you know pass on it. I wouldn't I wouldn't buy anything for this. Uh, but let me tell you what this Exercise list. Exercise caution. <laughs> yeah. So if you're unfamiliar with Hollow Heart, because nobody really plays it competitively, uh, Hollow Heart allows each wizard, not wizard hero, but each wizard to cast an additional spell. And when they learn a spell from the lore uh, of of Whitefire, which is the the lore from this army, you can learn a second spell. Uh, so effectively, every wizard gains plus one ca- plus one spell cast. Uh, and, to, and an extra spell learned, which is awesome. Uh, that makes the, the Storm Coven able to cast three spells per turn, um, and they can also learn two spells from the lore. The spells I've chosen to give them are Ignite Weapons, which which is plus one to wound, which works on both melee and shooting. So now these guys are on twos and threes when they're sharp shooting, which is a lot better than twos and fours. They are also going to be casting Aether Shock every turn, and they are casting Louch on the Soul Seeker. So that the ten evocators in this in this army can get strike first and louch on. What makes this in particular so appealing is that Hollow Heart has a command ability where one of your wizards can take d6 mortal wounds, and then uh, every wizard around that wizard can then get that that much bonus to casting. Uh, so the idea here is you use the big body of the Anointed on Frost Phoenix. He takes d6 mortal wounds. You uh, you do not use the ward. Uh, you just let them happen, be- and then you heal the wounds back up with Seer Wounds from the Free Guild General, because he heals d6 and the Anointed takes d6. You're basically casting all your spells on three dice. And when you're casting on three dice, um, that's looking a lot better than casting on two dice. You could also, you know, just here, there's Purple Sun, you can swap that for Cog, so you could be, you know, three dice and a reroll, potentially, effectively. <laughs> it's going to make Aethershock really reliable. It's going to make Lauchon really reliable. It's going to make this combo just, just easy to pull off. Um, to round it out, I decided to go with a free guild general, uh, three units of 10 crossbowmen, which the general can issue a command to give them all plus one hit, plus one wound. I think it makes them twos and threes. Uh, and then the purple sun, if you choose to use it here, can make them all rend one. And that's a lot of shooting damage. I believe that's 20 shots per unit. Uh, that'll chew through zombies. That'll chew through skeletons. All these things we're seeing that are high wound count. And then a little squad of flagellants down there because there's a Cities of Sigmar battle tactic that requires like the easiest possible thing you just contest an objective with flagellants or something easily easy like that and the last 220 points goes to two units of five drake spawn knights they're a wide screen they're fast they have a three up save they have 10 wounds they are 110 points they're just an all-around badass unit uh, very high tactical value so that's the list it, it, it like it looks like a stormcast list really right like it's got your centerpieces it's got your castle formation with the crossbowmen um, tons of utility from these spells. I don't want to go through what every single one of these does, but it, if you're a cities player, you know. Um, there's, yeah, I, th- this was trying to break the, this war scroll as much as possible. Um, I couldn't think of a stronger combo than this. Yeah, it's, I mean, Cities of Sigmar is 
pretty good with Stormcast, but Stormcast with any bonuses to cast and fight first, having on, you know, some big hammer unit that Stormcast could muster, like Evocators. Yeah, it's brilliant. If City of Sigmar wasn't, you know, due anytime soon, I'd play this, but unfortunately. But who knows, maybe, you know, if we still keep our coalition rules, I might still play them. Maybe. I think I might try proxying this with my new Seraphon. You know, I can get Skinks for Crossbowmen. I can use the Raptodon Chargers for Drake Spawn Knights and a Skink Star Priest mm-hmm. for the Free Guild General and basically just run this list and, and see what happens. Yeah, it's yeah, it's not it's not a it's not a bad idea at all. All right, and the third list that I prepared, uh, because I got lizards on the brain right now, I thought I would make a battle regiment seraphon list. Uh, this uses a Slant Star Master, who has a spell that that he can cast to give all other wizards plus one to cast. Uh, with the Chronomantic Cogs, that means your your Storm Coven are now casting at plus one and a reroll, which is very reliable. Uh, the general here is actually a Skink Star Seer, using a command trait that I bet nobody has even read properly. Uh, but it's Shrewd Strategist, which uh, at the start of the enemy combat phase, uh, if if you have a unit that is not in combat and within twelve inches, it can declare a charge immediately. This is really good if you have a strike first effect and you have a hammer unit, like say six Croxagore Warspond, uh, ready to charge into range. So the idea with this list is you teleport the Croxagores forward, you cast Speed of Huanchi to make them move five inches in the hero phase so your opponent can't redeploy. You have a four inch charge with your Croxagores, who will also have a strike first effect because you can cast Aether Shock on them from any range out of unbinding range. Uh, all of that is happening with a plus one and with a reroll. So it's all very reliable. And then rounding it out is a spawn of Chotek to add some shooting to clear screens, two by five units are wrapped it on chargers that can uh, play flanks and control objectives, and a purple son of Shaiish to boost the damage of the Croxagores to Ren 3. Not sure if this is the best Seraphon list ever. I just wanted to explore this concept of, of using Shrewd Strategist to charge in the enemy turn with a strike first unit after getting a four-inch charge and just obliterating screens and just getting really, really deep into enemy lines. Just... It feels really, really good to do this. What? That spell works on allies? Yes, it does. It works on any unit. Any friendly unit, oh and any God. enemy. <laughs> and you know who else oh can ally God. Stormcast? Every order army. <laughs> oh, yeah. I don't know how I feel about that. <laughs> <laughs> like, do I want, like, because here's the thing. 275 is a big call for us, but is it a big call for other armies? I'm trying to think. Can Daughters of Cain use this? Effect, probably. I don't know if they have any bonuses to casting. Um, I mean, but strike I mean, first on Lord, snakes. They don't have any good. now, and they're risking mind raiser on eight. <laughs> but um, well, what I like it with this strike? list in particular is like you can't fight the Croxagora because they're going to fight you first at rent three. Um, but they're also minus one to wound with missile weapons, and you will have a, a mystic shield on them and a five on board. Like it's a really really tough unit. There's not a lot of ways to wipe it out very easily between the unbinding from yeah. the slan and the minus one to wound and. Yeah, there's there's a lot going on here. Yeah, all good. I like it. I think the Slant Star Master could actually work better in a Stormcast list than the Drake Sworn Templar. He effect he you know three spell wizard, so he can cast your endless spells. He can cast Mystic Shield. He can cast the plus one cast for everything. So it's like having a plus one Drake Sworn, um, but he's two seventy five instead of four hundred like the Drake Sworn. So you could also fit in a Knight and Cantor. He can cast Celestial Blades that can be at plus one as well because the Slant buffs all wizards. Yeah, I, I think there's definitely a lot of play. The the Storm Coven is, honest to God, not a bad War Scroll. Even with the points, I think it's okay. Um, if it went down to like 210, I think I'd be ready to see it in a lot of different lists. Mm. Yeah. All right, and that's it for this video. Uh, thank you, everybody, for watching, and especially thank you to our Patreon supporters and our YouTube members. You guys are, are the ones funding this channel, and it really does make all this time we sink into it worthwhile. If you think we missed anything about this war scroll or, or our analysis is lacking in some way, please leave a comment down below. We read them every single day. If you want to talk about AOS, jump into the Stormkeep Discord server. We talk all day, every day, pretty much to a fault. Uh, we post battle reports. We post our models. We have community contests. Like right now, we have a Dracothian Guard painting contest with fabulous prizes. Uh, so feel free to jump in there and join the conversation. Consider also supporting the podcast by becoming a member on YouTube or joining us at patreon.com slash the Stormkeep. Uh, coming up next on the podcast, we have a full review for uh, Battle Tome Seraphon, a full review for Battle Tome Blades of Corn, and a quick review for Soul Blight Grave Lords. I know a lot of people have been complaining about that army lately, so we thought we'd give them a, a quick look. 
And uh, there's more on top of that. So uh, thank you everybody for watching and we'll see you in the next one. See you guys.